All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with everybody. And don't forget, after we finish this short broadcast, to download the video and share it in Facebook, wherever you wish to share. As you see in the title today, we have Mr. Bean. Now, Mr. Bean is something funny, and someone is, uh, you know, he he play a joy uh, for those who watch because he's a comedian. Uh, but you know, most of those who they are comedian, they are really smart. They are not really stupid as people think. In order to be able to make people laugh, it's really hard job. It's not easy. Um, actually, you have to be extreme smart. But yet we are going to compare between Mr. Bean, the comedian, as a character, not the actor, which means the stupidity of Mr. Bean, which we see in the act, not the real person, and Muhammad as a prophet and a real person. And let us see who is more comedian and who is more stupid. One of you, he said to me, uh, you mentioned in the previous broadcast a hadith, but I did not really understand what you just said. And this is why actually I'm doing this live broadcast again. You see, I'm here not putting Mr. Dean, Mr. Bean to make him equal to Muhammad. God forbid, this guy, he brought joy to the life of many of people. Muhammad, he brought nothing but anger and hate and crimes and killing and bloodshed everywhere, every day in the world. Every day there's suicide bombing, there's killing, there's slaughtering, there is death, whatever Muhammad name goes, blood, shade, go with him. So I'm not comparing between two about bringing joy. I'm comparing between, as I said, the comedy character of Mr. Bean and the stupidity of this person, which is appears supposedly in the act, not the person, and the real Muhammad, how stupid he is. Remember, I'm not insulting. I'm going to prove that Muhammad, he did, who beat everybody in his stupidity. You see, the hadith I mentioned <clears throat> in the previous broadcast is this one, and this is Sahih Muslim, this is Sahih Hadith, where it says, Muhammad talking, not me. Remember, don't judge me for the stupidity of Muhammad. I have nothing to do with his stupidity. Muhammad, he said, and this is the name of the title of the story. Chapter sin are erased by praying for forgiveness and repenting. Sins are erased by praying for forgiveness and repenting. Remember that this title is very important. And let us connect the title to the story. Muhammad, he said, who is the one is talking? Muhammad. By him in whose my ha uh, hand is my life. If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. Now, how stupid is that? You explain to me if you are a Muslim. What Muhammad he just said, destroy all the idea of Islam. That God, he sent messengers to guide us to go out of sin. But yet, this God, he will destroy us if we don't commit sin. <laughs> I mean, hold on, hold on. You see, uh, the, words, the world is full of donkeys. Uh, uh, and uh, it doesn't matter how big their ears is or small, it's still a donkey is a donkey. We don't judge the donkey by the size of his ear. But we can judge the donkey by the stupidity he bring to us. How you are saying to us that Allah, he sent 124,000 messenger in order to save us because we are sinners. And yet you are saying to us, if you don't commit sin, I will kill you.
somebody here is taking too much hashish somebody here is suffering from mental illness why Muhammad he came to mankind to save you from your sin okay so the reason for Muhammad to come because we are sinners you are right and what Muhammad will do he will make us ask Allah for forgiveness and then Allah will forgive our sin okay what if I don't commit sin? Will Allah will kill you? <laughs> he will destroy you. <laughs> I mean, this is very deep. And the funny, the title is sin are erased by praying for forgiveness and repenting my friend i did not have sin yet so what is the solution allah will kill you <laughs> see muslims they claim that they are abrahamic they follow abraham and now how we can connect Abraham to Muhammad based on this Allah he did the flood of Noah because people they did not commit sin <laughs> Muhammad based on this Allah he destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because they did not commit sin obviously <laughs> Additional to that based on the intelligence of what it's called the Prophet Muhammad all those who will go to heaven is those who commit sin not those who don't commit sin <laughs> and you are asking me why i laugh at islam and why i believe muhammad is an idiot And why I'm comparing between Mr. Bean and Muhammad? What, what kind of a prophet this prophet is? And here we have a problem to solve. Think about it. It's beyond jokes and comedy. If Allah will destroy me because I did not commit sin, why he will destroy me? Because we did not commit sin. Read with me carefully. If you were not to commit sin, Allah will destroy you. Let us analyze this stupidity. Allah, he need people who commit sin. What is the reason Allah, he need people who commit sin? Because he wants you to ask him for forgiveness. <laughs> That's a stupid religion. Question Abdul Why Allah He need people who commit sin so they can ask for forgiveness? Is that mean that you are telling me that your God is a mentally ill and he have a self-esteem issue and he needed worshippers and people begging him, please forgive us? Because if he did not commit sin, he cannot forgive you. And now it is a mandatory that you have to commit sin so he can feel good. So we do commit sin, Allah feel good. <laughs> if Allah wake up in the morning and there is nobody in this earth is committing sin, the day of Allah is screwed. How well I can drink coffee in the morning now.
He will wake up in the morning and he will look, he will find nobody committing sick. He will say, what the heck? How boring this world is. Those people are boring. Let me create a bunch of hookers. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. I am going to create a bunch of hookers and then after they commit hookerism, they ask me for forgiveness. <laughs> if you know, or if you do not know, if you are asking me what is intelligence, well, this is intelligence. Allah, he will not, he will never be born. He will open his YouTube channel and he will find people around the world shaking their ass, taking drugs, having sex and naked, and that will make Allah feel good. <laughs> this is what it's called wisdom in Islam. And if we ask Dr. Zakir Naik how you explain this wisdom, he will say the following. But the hadith in Tahweeh Muslim, hadith number 7779 It said that if you don't commit sin, Allah will go and throw you and replace you. The reason for that, brother, because Allah, he wants to have fun. Imagine you are God and you wake up in the morning, you see nothing to play with. And there are no people asking for forgiveness. How boring that is. Allah, He wants us to worship Him and beg for forgiveness. Every day, every day, you put down, please, Allah, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And brother, I advise you, brother, even if you don't commit sin, ask Allah for forgiveness because Allah will feel good when He sees that and He will like you more. And you are telling me that Muhammad is not super intelligent? And you are telling me that Islam is not perfectly smart? Who can come with ideas like this? Adam, he commits sin actually because Allah, he made him commit sin as we know in the other hadith where it says that Allah, he created the sin of Adam 40 years before Allah created him. And this is again proven to us that Allah is suffering from mental problem. He have a chemical balance in his brain. He created Adam and he made him do sin so he can be asked or he, Adam, he should ask for forgiveness and then Allah will forgive Adam. And obviously, that is a proof that Islam is Abrahamic. <laughs> Blada Thither. Blada Thither. Hmm. If we ask Zakir Naik why Allah he made Adam commit sin, Zakir Naik, he will explain to you. Blada Thither. Other example, there is a person, he asked me a question. Why Allah he made Adam commit sin? And this is not the sin of Adam because Allah, he forced Adam to do sin. The logical answer for that is very easy. As an example, consider yourself, you are a husband and you have five kids. And all of them didn't do anything wrong. Then how you can spank them? They have to do wrong so you can spank them. Brother, me, myself, I like to spank my kids. And if they did not do something wrong, I cannot spank them. So Allah, he made Adam commit sin, so he will spank him and he will get him out of heaven. It's very simple and very ludicrous. Thank you very much.
my friend I'm not going to stay here long with you I want to keep this video short let me confirm to you what the Chinese they said long time ago he left as a donkey he never and will never come back as a horse and the one I'm talking about here is your Prophet Muhammad don't try to make him look like a horse for us his ears is different from the ears of a horse his words is not the house is not the, the sound of a horse his wisdom is a wisdom of a donkey he left as a horse no he left as a donkey and he will never come back as a horse this is not a person who can be any close to be wise this is a person who is suffering from mental illness providing to us a God who is mentally ill who like to be asking for us to be asked for forgiveness just for fun just because he is God not because you commit sin not because you are bad and he is good the fact this is a proof that he is the one is bad he is the one who have no dignity and no justice he is the one who lied to us and you say that if you commit sin you go to hell but as you see if you don't commit sell sin he will destroy you anyway so you commit sin you don't commit sin it doesn't matter this God he liked you to be a sinner so he can feel better and he can see people begging him for he is a psycho and he have a mental issue he liked to be begged please forgive me please if you don't do that you don't feel good and that is something you can ask anyone who have degree in psychology to explain to you what is the mental problem your God is suffering from and by the way as long the one here is speaking is Muhammad obviously the problem is not the problem of Allah because Allah does not exist it is the problem of the one who say those words explaining to us how he think and what he think and what we should be we should be sinner otherwise Allah will be upset and if we are sinner Allah will be upset and then we have to ask for forgiveness so Allah will not be upset now what we will do to make Allah upset or not upset Allah knows best Islam is a stupid religion and you cannot say to me I am wrong please you leave your comment down in the video and if you are a Muslim I would like to hear from you tell me if I am wrong or not and leave your opinion and again this is Sahih Muslim this is not my hadith this is not my reference it's all over the all over it's not in only one place I can show it to you in two places leave your comment down and if you are a Muslim please explain to us who is the stupid here your prophet or your God one of them have have to be stupid who is the one here is sick in his mind who is the one is suffering from mental illness who like people to beg him for forgiveness to the point he is willing to destroy you with no just because destruction should happen for a reason for justification but God he will destroy me just because I did not commit sin so what is the flood of Noah is about so what Sodom and Gomorrah is about so what is hell and heaven is about if you are not a person who commits sin still Allah will destroy you which means this God is a sick he is mental and he cannot be God for God is perfect and God is not a mule thank you very much for watching don't forget to leave your comment don't don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends and this is a Christian Prince was with you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord and Islam is false Thank you very much for being here. Take care.